The Chinese Communist Party's sixth plenary session, which concluded last week, established Xi Jinping's political longevity as a paramount leader. Some foreign media proclaimed, Xi Jinping's successor is Xi Jinping. They may have been joking, but the issue of leadership succession has haunted the party ever since it seized power. From Mao Zedong to Deng Xiaoping and to now Xi Jinping, each leader has struggled to find a successor. The CCP's leadership transition process has a history full of schemes and power struggles, some marked with bloodshed. So how did the Chinese Communist Party produce its leaders? Hello, welcome to Lei's Rule Talk, I'm Lei. In this three-part series, we'll talk about how the CCP leaders were chosen and came into power. The first paramount leader and the founder of the CCP, Mao Zedong, had four successors. Two subsequently became Mao's biggest enemies and died of unnatural causes, and the other two were overthrown by Deng Xiaoping, the CCP's second paramount leader. Mao's first chosen successor was Liu Shaoqi. When British Field Marshal Viscount Montgomery met with Mao in September 1961, he asked Mao, Is it clear now, Chairman, who your successor will be? And Mao replied, Very clearly, it's Liu Shaoqi. At that time, Liu was vice chairman of the party's Central Committee and president of China. In 1956, Nikita Khrushchev, the successor of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, shocked the world by giving a speech denouncing Stalin at the 20th Congress of the Soviet Communist Party. This had a great impact on Mao Zedong, who feared a Khrushchev who would betray him one day. In 1962, Mao Zedong and Liu Shaoqi disagreed on how to handle the famine caused by the Great Leap Forward movement, which Mao launched. After that, Mao became more and more suspicious of Liu and felt that he was the Khrushchev in his circle. In 1966, Mao launched the Cultural Revolution, and one of his most important missions was to bring down Liu Shaoqi. He branded Liu as a traitor and a thief. After being publicly humiliated, his home ransacked, his wife arrested, and his children kicked out, Liu died miserably while in detention. Mao's second successor was Lin Biao, a general who helped Mao win many battles. He became the vice chairman of the Communist Party in 1966. Lin's succession was even written into the newly revised party constitution, and he was described by Mao as a close comrade and the successor. However, Mao and Lin later disagreed about some policies. This made Mao unhappy. In August 1971, during his southern tour, Mao talked with the local provincial leaders about his conflicts with Lin. Preparing to bring Lin down, Mao claimed that someone wanted to split the party and was eager to seize power. While on vacation in Beidaihe, the CCP leader's summer retreat, Lin learned about Mao's words. He felt that a big storm was coming. And then on September 13, 1971, Lin Biao, his wife and son were killed when their airplane went down near Wunder Khan in Mongolia. Some claimed that their airplane was shot down. Then, after two years, the CCP announced that the family was defecting to the Soviet Union when their airplane ran out of gas and crashed during an emergency landing. The CCP formally charged Lin with being a conspirator and a counter-revolutionary traitor. After Lin Biao's death, Mao proceeded to choose a third successor. He finally chose Wang Hongwen, a revolutionary rebel from Shanghai. In 1973, the 38-year-old Wang was elected vice chairman of the CCP's Central Committee. After becoming part of the central leadership, Wang worked closely with Mao's wife, Madame Mao, and became an active member of her faction. This upset Mao, and he soon was looking for a new successor. By the way, it's worth mentioning that the political career of the CCP's second paramount leader, Deng Xiaoping, rose and fell during this period of time. Because Deng had worked closely with Mao's first successor, Liu Shaoqi, Deng was persecuted during Liu's downfall. Deng's home was ransacked. In 1968, his eldest son, who was a student at Beijing University, fell from the fourth floor at school while being criticized by the revolutionary youth. He became paralyzed from the waist down. Deng and his wife were sent to Jiangxi and were closely watched. In 1973, 
Mao released Deng from house arrest and took him back into the CCP's central leadership. But Deng ran into fierce opposition from Madame Mao and her faction. So Deng was quickly displaced by Mao again. The fourth successor appointed by Mao during his lifetime was Hua Guofeng, who was the party secretary of Hunan, Mao's home province. Rumor had it that he was the illegitimate son of Mao because the two looked so much alike. But Hong Kong's Apple Daily reported in 2008 that a DNA test of their offspring by a Beijing hospital proved that this was a false claim. Less than a month after Mao's death, Hua teamed up with other CCP senior patriarchs and arrested Madame Mao and her gang of four. By the way, Madame Mao was Deng Xiaoping's biggest adversary at this point. Hua also sent Mao's third successor, the rebel from Shanghai, to prison for life. Hua then became the chairman of the party and the military. He was known as Chairman Hua, even though he was the only CCP leader who ever held two positions the chairman of the party and also the premier of the state council. He had no real power and didn't last long. Despite the fact that Hua helped Deng Xiaoping remove his political enemy, Madame Mao, Deng displaced him four years later. Deng accused Hua of blindly following Mao's political legacy. From Hua's perspective though, he was Mao's chosen heir and couldn't have acted differently. This just shows that the CCP's political struggling and infighting is ruthless and has no principles. Hua permanently left politics in 1981 and disappeared from the public eye. Even though Mao established four heirs, none really ended up succeeding him. Deng Xiaoping became the second paramount leader of China. Some media called Deng Mao's successor, but he wasn't. Deng removed Mao's legitimate successor in order to seize power. After Deng came to power, however, he inherited the same problem Mao had, not finding a successor. We'll talk about Deng Xiaoping and his struggle with his chosen heirs next week. By the way, if you want to help me with my YouTube ranking, search for Lay's Real Talk in YouTube and watch the latest video. I was told that will help me grow the channel. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. I'll see you next time.